guys, so we are now in Dubai at WOW Summit and here with you Anna Tutova, co-founder of Coins Telegram and our guest, Dr. Marwan Azaruni, who is the CEO of Dubai Blockchain Center. Great to have you here, Dr. Marwan. Thank you for having me, Anna. I know you knew out about crypto quite early, so can you tell us about your background and how did you discover Bitcoin first? I uh, discovered Bitcoin uh, a while ago, in 2012 actually, uh, through the Bitcoin white paper. A, a friend of mine, he actually put it on my desk and he said, you, you're uh, very like uh, forward looking when it comes to technology and I think this one you'll love. And uh, yeah, I loved it from reading the paper and then uh, the Silk Road happened and somebody was telling me that Bitcoin transactions cannot be traced. So I took it as a challenge and I actually uh, jumped in and uh, tried to study how Bitcoin works. Of course, I had the white paper already, so I loved it and I fell in love and then I discovered mining and then I did mining for five years from 2012 until 2017. And uh, the rest is history, like they say. So did you get the idea of Bitcoin immediately or did it take time to understand the value of it? Uh, almost instantly, because I, I did my master's in information security and information security in my uh, paper was actually on network-centric organizations. And blockchain was a perfect uh, example of decentralization. And I always thought about it as an organizational kind of instrument, not a money instrument. And when Bitcoin came in, you have decentralization of actual operations, and then you have decentralization of actual wealth. It was a marriage made in heaven, and I, I fell in love almost instantly. And why do you think that decentralization is important? I think decentralization is important for many reasons. One is robustness. There's no single point of failure. Second thing is uh, robustness of, of communications and operations. So even if you come in and go out, anybody can come in and go out without disrupting the network. This network still operates. It's good mechanism for the Byzantine problem. So there's no, uh, you know, uh, multiple truths. There's always a single source of truth. There's consensus mechanism. There's a governance mechanism. It's all been to, built into the system without, you know, leveraging uh, uh, greedy people, without, you know, uh, having a one person or one entity controlling the whole network. So it's a robust kind of ecological kind of system, I would say. And uh, can you tell more about the Dubai Blockchain Center, like how it started and your activities within it? So the Dubai Blockchain Center started and continues to, to work as an ecosystem building entity. So we want to educate people about this technology. We want to create events, meetups, hackathons. We want to bring in the thought leaders of the industry to Dubai. And also, we also actually go to other regions in the world to see what they're doing and try to get the best of both worlds. The international talent to come here and this talent here in Dubai to travel internationally to collaborate. We think and believe that blockchain technology and all the technologies that come with it are actually greenfield still. We are still very early and I think together we can speed up the adoption rates and together we can build much better projects. And so you're based here in Middle East in Dubai but you travel as well quite a lot. So what differences do you see in crypto regulations in different regions as well in crypto adoption? I think in Asia, I just came, uh, as you know, I met you there as well in Tokyo in 2049, and I love the ecosystem there, but I noticed that it's concentrated on the Southeast East Asia market. In Dubai, we are very central. We have access to Europe, to the West, uh, with the US, with South America as well, access to Africa, to the Indian subcontinent, as well as, uh, as the Far East. It is a perfect melting pot for all people from all kind of you know, backgrounds for all kinds of uh, people from different, you know, economic backgrounds, or cultural backgrounds, even the way of thinking is different between the East and the West. The way they perceive capital, they perceive technology is completely different. And therefore, this challenges you to look outside your comfort zone. This challenges you to think outside of the box. There is no box in Dubai. We are here to push the limits. We are here to push the boundaries. We are here to work together rather than against each other to accomplish great things, not only for us in the blockchain technology, but for the overall economy. And do you work with regulators here in the UAE? And what can you tell about cooperation with them in terms of pushing blockchain technology and crypto forward? So Dubai has the world's first uh, created for purpose virtual regulator. So VARA is the first virtual uh, uh, regulatory authority for cryptocurrencies. And uh, 
So this is an amazing achievement for mankind, actually. It is not only a Dubai one, but it's a worldwide kind of achievement because we are not trying to peg crypto into existing financial systems, but try to create a crypto uh, you know, ecosystem regulator that is built from the ground up for crypto and actually is completely adaptive. So we know that VARA is actually moving much more rapidly than anything we've seen before because they are created for purpose. And for us as the Dubai Blockchain Center or the crypto community here, the advantage of having a regulator like VARA is we have a complete fast uh, uh, feedback loop. And we can go back very quickly to VARA and see if there's something we don't like, we can give them that feedback. They also can, can test and, and check regulations with you know, investors, the financial institutions, the consumers in a much more uh, faster kind of agile way of regulation. So this kind of environment is optimal for crypto. And it's not done also in silos. So we have a lot of you know, talks and, and, and events with uh, Hong Kong, with Singapore, with Europe, with, with other regions of the world to make sure that our regulations are not done in silo, that to make sure that the regulators are, uh, regulations are transportable, they are in line with the regulations elsewhere in the world, including and not limited to Europe. And what are the most interesting uh, blockchain use cases and uh, crypto uh, use cases for you? There's a lot of them. Right now, I think decentralized artificial intelligence is, sounds very promising. We are very early again, but we are very early in everything to do with crypto. So uh, I think everything, including TradeFi, uh, sustainable uh, you know, projects, so now with uh, Ethereum being proof of stake, is very interesting as well. Uh, a lot of other saving mechanisms uh, are extremely uh, important to push this industry forward. And I think the focus should be and always uh, has to be with, uh, with uh, building uh, uh, something of value, uh, whether it's in GameFi, SocialFi, TradeFi, or any other XFi kind of project. And you mentioned that your, your background education is in information security and blockchain is considered to be like the most secure system, but still we see a lot of hacks, uh, a lot of uh, breaches of smart contracts and so on. So what should be done in uh, that case uh, to, uh, to, to, keep, uh, the, 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 uh, to keep lower the cybercrime and as well as the breaches of those contracts and so on? I think education is, is a huge part of it. Smart contract uh, security is extremely important. There's a lot of methods and a lot of research papers that are being based out of Dubai and uh, elsewhere in the world that are focusing on how to build secure code. And now AI is going to add to that tremendously. So we're going to see less and less ways to break, but also AI is going to be developed on the other side as well, in the hacking side. So it's going to be always this kind of uh, yin and yang and, and uh, but uh, I think it's no, no different than any other financial system. The, the robbers or the hackers will always go where the money is. And it's always a good idea to protect that by design from the beginning rather than have that uh, security as an afterthought. And I think this is uh, at the core of what we do here in Dubai. Dubai, one of the first cities in the world to have an uh, electronic security center that not only does auditing and also does advisory, but also does actual projects that actually put things like cyber index uh, for uh, ratings for mm -hmm. government departments and their security posture. They have a, their own products and their own hardware entities and uh, in, uh, uh, devices that actually help government departments to secure their network. So all of that within the Dubai ecosystem is extremely healthy to provide this environment and ecosystem where security is at the core of everything that we do.